Once you have downloaded the Extendazon plugin file from the Extendazon website, it's actually quite simple and fast to get this installed and running on your websites. Go into your WordPress dashboard, look in the sidebar for the plugins menu, and click on Add New. That'll bring you to the screen that you see here. Click on the Upload Plugin button at the top, and then click on Browse. This will open up a window for you to browse your computer. You want to find the Extendazon file that you have downloaded from the Extendazon website. Select it, click on Open, and then click on Install. After this is done, you want to click on the Activate Plugin link, and this is going to get the plugin activated on the website. However, there is one more step that you need to take to actually get this thing running. Currently, at this point, the plugin's not doing anything on the website. To get it to start doing something, you have to complete the setup process to give it a little bit of initial information, and then it can start doing its job. So look for Extendazon in the sidebar menu now and click on it to start the setup process. This will bring you to step one of the setup process, which is to provide your Amazon API settings. The Amazon API settings are two different keys. It's an access key ID and a secret access key that you obtain from Amazon. The steps to acquire those keys, if you do not have these or if you're not familiar with this already, just simply proceed through these steps and it will walk you through how to get these keys. Make sure you visit both of these links you need to go here first and sign up for the product advertising API. This is done through your Amazon affiliate account. Then you need to go here again through your Amazon affiliate account and register your API keys. On this second page, that's where you proceed through the rest of these steps to get these two keys that you're going to enter. So once that, that is done, then you just enter them in and click on the continue button and this is going to take you to step two of the process. Now step two simply involves telling the plugin what kind of shopping cart you want to be using with Extendazon. Now there is a separate tutorial video on the different shopping cart types where I will demonstrate all of these to you and tell you a little bit more about each of them. All you have to do for this part though is just simply click on the one that you want. All four of the on-site options, these are the actual shopping carts, the direct Amazon links. This eliminates one step of the process. It's basically like clicking on the checkout button in the shopping cart, except this is done directly through each of your Amazon links. Whereas with the shopping carts, it's going to add the product to the shopping cart. So this will only let you check out that one item that a user is clicking on, but again, it eliminates a step in the process. But if you want the actual shopping cart on your website, you're going to have to go for one of the top four options. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose one of these. I'll just go with the on-site shopping cart page to begin with, and then I'm going to click on continue. So once we have continued on, this actually completes the setup process. The plugin is now running on your website after you have done this. However, if you have picked any of the on-site shopping carts, there is one more thing that you're going to need to do. You will see a link that says go here to add Extendazon widget. You need to click on this and go and enable the widget for your website. You'll see it right here, Extendazon Amazon Shopping Cart. You just click on this and drag it, in most cases, into your primary sidebar. If your website does not show the primary sidebar, just simply 
pick a different widget location. You can try them all out and see which one you like the best. Depending on the theme that you are using, you will have different widget locations available to you. On my particular site, I actually do not show the sidebar very much in some cases, so I might have it in like the top widget area. On this site, I do use the sidebar, so I could leave this over here in the primary sidebar. In most cases, you're going to want this pretty high up towards the top. Sometimes you may leave a little search feature above it. In other cases, you may put this all the way up at the top, so it's the main feature over in the sidebar. So when this is set and the setup process has been completed, everything is actually running. You can go ahead and visit the website at that point. You can go to a page on your site that has products and you can click on Amazon links to add those to your shopping cart.